All right, welcome. Today we've got an exciting debate on big data, probably one of the most uh, hyped topics of this conference and of many other conferences around. So we invited some of the greatest minds in HPC, or at least some of the uh, folks that were willing to do the panel, <laughs> to uh, come and talk to us today about their thoughts on big data and how it influences HPC. I'm gonna ask each of our fine panelists to take 30 seconds or less and introduce themselves and their organization and then we'll start into Hello. the questions. We'll start here. Yes. Well, hi, I'm Rich Bruckner from Inside HPC. I also have a publication called Inside Big Data. So, uh, thanks everybody. Thank you. Oh, okay. And I'm Merle Giles from NCSA. I, I run the industrial engagement and what we call the private sector program at NCSA in Champaign, Illinois. Uh, my name is Don Grabsky. I'm a director of product management at Zyrotex. Hi, I'm Addison Snell with Intersect 360 Research. We're industry analysts for the high performance computing industry, market research, consulting, technology trend analysis, which of course this year included a major end user study on big data. Hi, my name is Frank Naviglia. I work for, the, uh, for NOAA and part of their production HPC team. Uh, Brady Kimball with Adaptive Computing, uh, VP of Engineering. Uh, that we're hosting this, so we basically do workload management scheduler software, uh, the product MOAP. Uh, Keith Mazarnik from uh, Hewlett Packard's High Performance Computing Group, Hyperscale, uh, design solutions for military applications. The first question I want to start out with is probably the biggest question, which is what is big data? We think about it, it's two words big, adjective, data, noun. But together, they've taken on a whole new world of meaning. So uh, let's, uh, let's start with Rich, and uh, if you could give us your thoughts on what is big data. When I talk about big data, I'm really talking about bu business analytics, okay? Big data in this space might mean a certain amount of petabytes and IO and everything, but really, I think in the context of enterprise and where these things meet, big data is about learning things from diverse sets of data, unstructured data, all these things like that. Uh, that's what it's about to me. Okay, fairly vanilla answer. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Merle, what are your thoughts? What is big data? Let me add to what Rich just said. That, that, that I like the analytics because that's sort of like an active verb. That's good because uh, in the academic world, we store more data that we don't ever go back to perhaps, but uh, big data is both the storage component and the use of it that may be a data intensive computing, it may be a few other flavors, but uh, it's that, that pipeline. Okay, so the pipeline effect, gives yeah. you, that's Don. I think uh, big data is in the eye of the beholder. Um, somebody th going from a USB stick to a hard disk, that's big data, but from Xyrotex, big data for us is 25 petabytes running at one terabyte per second. Um, and also, it's really looking at the reliability, availability, and serviceability of that data, where you start looking at more of the business critical attributes for your data in terms of return on investment versus just pure science. You, wait, wait, wait. Okay. you mean you mean to say big data is a 50 gig mem, mem stick? So, it, it, no, it's <laughs> not. No, this this no, guy's. No. You want to ask him about this opportunity? <laughs> what big data is, but we'll get to that. All right, we'll yeah. we'll continue around the horn here, Keith. What is HP's definition of big data? So our approach towards big data is really finding a solution to problems associated with big data solution, creating that balance between computational interconnected data capacity so they can use that data in a manner that will improve your business or your mission. Okay, excellent. Brady Kimball. So to kind of to go to Don, complement Don's answer, really for adaptive and for me, it's it's any workload that, uh, you know, is storage intensive. Any Anytime you have data, uh, you're dealing with storage throughput, uh, failure rates, things of that nature. So really for, for me and for adaptive, it's, you know, anytime we're concerned about failure rates or, or storage performance of your uh, uh, computational resources, your okay. jobs. Frank. I, I, I agree with Don and, and Merle here. Da uh, big data is the creation of data right to the analytics. So it's the whole pipeline and the whole experiment from soup to nuts. All right, Addison, any final thoughts on what is big data? I have quite a few final thoughts, All actually. Right. <laughs> last on this particular question because uh, I think it shows the folly of trying to narrow down big data as being a specific type of application or, or even a set of applications. What we really see with big data is that it's a set of trends, if anything, where you're looking at the increase in the creation and accessibility of data that's 
across an organization stressing that organization's ability to maintain a competitive advantage based on that data. Now once you accept this knowledge of big data as a set of trends, you can see how it affects a lot of different application areas in vertical markets, whether you're talking about enterprise analytics or real-time analytics or MapReduce types of applications or data mining types of applications. And these come with a lot of different dimensions. It's not necessarily the size of a file. It might be the fact that I have a billion different files, or it might be the lifespan of the file is either very short or very long, which are very different types of problems. The last thing I'll try to say about it is that it's important to realize that the big in big data is a relative term, like the high in high performance computing. There are entry level big data problems, just like there are entry level high performance computing problems. And to go to someone and say, you know, you're only dealing with this many terabytes, you don't really have big data, is to be not as a appreciative enough of the problem that for them they're stressing their infrastructure and have a big data problem. Excellent. So great way to wind up that question. Now we're here at the uh, world's largest HPC conference at uh, Supercomputing. We think we know a thing or two about big data. What I want each of you to opine on now is what is the intersection of big data, which if you go to pretty much any tech conference this year, they're all talking about big data. So what does HPC and big data have to do with each other, and what's that intersection? Let's uh, start in the back with Brady Kimball. Okay, so obviously if you go to other conferences that aren't high-performance computing, you're going to deal with companies that are used to dealing with enterprise websites or other things of that nature where you have you know, large uh, data sets that are static. Whereas you know, in HPC, we've been dealing with a lot of these big data problems for years, um, if not decades. And, and, and the thing that's different is that obviously when you're, you're dealing with HPC, uh, you're dealing with different skill sets, right? So enterprise, you're dealing a lot more with Hadoop and everyone's saying Hadoop's going to save the world. Whereas with HPC, it's like, well, maybe Hadoop isn't going to be successful for certain types of uh, applications that are more MPI centric. So I think uh, you know, that to summarize uh, what, what HPC brings to big data is that we've been solving these problems for years and it's a matter of using the right technologies uh, to map to these trends as Addison described. Well, yeah, not to jump in out of turn, but I, I think that's actually the dangerous kind of thinking that you don't want to get into saying, oh, HPC has solved this big data problem. We've been doing this for years. You don't want to underappreciate the fact that someone else might have a new type of problem. Sure, fair. What I agree with is that they, we have technologies that have yes. been around in HPC for a long time mm -hmm. that have a great deal of applicability to solving these problems. Just don't underappreciate that there might be a new type of problem. Right, and that's a fair point. I mean, you look at uh, you look at some of the challenges that HPC faces. You know, I hear from customers all the time about MPI and the failure handling and the failure to tolerance of MPI and some of the brain dead you know checkpoint restart problems. Whereas with big data you know, there's some more fault tolerance that, that, that those applications require and HPC guys are left scratching their heads. So I recognize that, that HPC guys uh, in, in the industry have, have challenges to solve as well. Uh, well, well, I could help. HPC has been struggling with big data forever. We have yeah. not been solving it yeah. forever. So I would, would beg to differ with that one comment. And I don't know where you've been living, Addison, but this <laughs> set of trends, <laughs> I, that comes from charm school. And I, it, maybe, and, and so set of, no, we've been struggling with it forever, forever. And, and, and it's just a matter of we're keeping more data. We can do more with the data. We can actually analyze and do the analytics on more data than ever before. So it feels like big data. But we knew this 10 years ago. We dealt with big data then. Any rebuttal, Allison? Go ahead. <laughs> from the charm school back row now. Yeah, from the charm <laughs> school back row. I agree with you that the data acceleration has been happening in HPC for a long time. What's taken hold is that enterprise is now at a tipping point. And what you see for the first time is that enterprise, which has always been, you know, uh, the, where RAS is, has been the, the dominating thinking, right? My payroll database is working. Don't touch it. Don't break it. Now it's breaking because I've got more data being created or accessible than I'm handling. And you're starting to see this more price performance mindset creeping into more accounts. They don't necessarily think of it as an HPC thing, but they are evaluating performance a lot more for the first time and spending money on it. All right, let's uh, turn the time now to Rich Bruckner. So Rich, you, uh, you, you own Inside HPC, but then you decided HPC wasn't encompassing enough of big data, I guess, and you started Inside Big Data. So why is 
big data, not just a subset of HPC. Why did you go to the trouble and pay another ten dollars and get uh, that other domain name? Yeah, GoDaddy loves me. Oh, well, you think about it uh, from an editorial standpoint. If if people are used to reading about HPC and I start diluting it with all this talk about enterprise and you know Oracle and business analytics, and they're like. This guy doesn't even know what HPC is. You can't dilute the content. I saw huge trends coming in both areas, and I wanted a bucket to put it in. And I see big data as a place where, as the Pied Piper, can. this is a place where HPC companies are going to get their growth. It's only going to grow organically from the HPC supercomputing market at a very you know, steady pace forever. If you want something bigger and make more money, this enterprise, this is the promised land, in my view. All right. Frank, so Noah has uh, how much data, roughly? Ooh. Lots of petabytes. I don't Lots know. of <laughs> petabytes, okay. I'll and spread across a great deal. And uh, before about 2009, we didn't talk too much about the term big data, but you still had petabytes mm -hmm. in 2002 probably, right? Yes, we did. We've so is that, has something changed for you now that we're talking about the big data trend? Are you thinking about things differently? Are you looking at data differently, or are you doing kind of the same sorts of things you were doing in 2002? So, so from a, from a science perspective, uh, computer science and science perspective, I think we're doing the same things, right? Uh, for, with that hat on, we've always been doing big data, uh, specifically in the labs. We we generate lots of data, we store it forever. We're a big data we're a big data producer. Um, but I do see value in the commercial aspects that these guys have been talking about, where you know that side of the industry is going to come up. It's going to it's going to add to our analytic, our analysis tools, just the same way that HPC and the scientific community adds to that analytics. So it, that's a nice place where they'll they'll intersect. But from from the from the HPC side, we're a big data data generator. We've always been. All right. Let's turn now to the uh, storage side of this equation. Don Grabsky from uh, Zyrotex. So Zyrotex focuses on all sorts of data problems. For you, what is the difference between HPC and big data? We list, um, the answer is we listen to our customers. So uh, my commentary on big data is I think HPC has been in a bit of a denial. And I think there are a few brave folks who really set the bar higher. And, and really put a team together. So I'd say going from HBC to big data, it's a team sport. You have to have the right partners, and each individual partner brings a significant element to make that solution to bring it across the finish line. So when you say what's big data, it's what, what our customers want and how they want to frame it and how they want to bring it across the finish line. And so when you get back to my original statement, <clears throat> it's back to that reliability, availability, serviceability, and of course capability, HBC, has always been noted for capability, but if you can't start to monetize it. If it's not available, it doesn't matter how fast it goes. And again, I want to emphasize the team sport partners to bring that across the finish line. It's really key. It's not one vendor doing one piece, but it's that collaborative effort. All right, so now uh, we're going to turn to Keith from HP. When we hear big data outside of maybe this conference, there's one word that usually comes to mind first, and it starts with an H, and it's not high-performance computing. What is that word? <laughs> I call it HP personally. But okay, it could be <laughs> HP. <laughs> but um, you know, the, the characteristic that we experienced all along with the with the changing in char performance characteristics of all aspects. I'm just relaying what you're saying. It's a team sport. We're running around chasing the bottleneck relative to the workload. You know, as we characterize that workload, we chase that high performance, you know, file, high performance compute, create a balance so that we can address that that price performance uh, number that you addressed previously. So, from my perspective, you know, HP is that solution provider. What was your view of H? So, uh, and thank you for that vendor plug. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you walked right into it. <laughs> Outside of this community, and probably even inside this community, people think big data is Hadoop. Yeah. Right? That's that's kind of the, they're almost one and the same in a lot of people's minds. If you say, yeah, I'm talking about big data, people immediately jump to Hadoop. So, hopefully we know a little better than that, but I'd love, Keith, maybe starting with you, uh, your thoughts. What is the difference between big data and Hadoop, or is uh, is Hadoop just everything that is in big data? 
No, Hadoop is not everything that's in big data. Hadoop is a way to address large data. It's a way to spray that, that sort of data and analytics across a large computational pool. Big data also can be large uh, you know, parallel storage solutions as we do with Xyrotech to create that high bandwidth single data pool. Hadoop allows you that read, write, no modify ability to access that data in a way that's useful. All right, uh, Merle, your thoughts, Hadoop. I'd like to go on record as actually complimenting Addison for his last comment that that that, that is the enterprise. What just happened here? Oh yeah, my God! That, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that, this this trend. So we in the HPC space have been largely limited to the the compute node for a lot of years, and now we have other players. If we think of Wall Street, if we think of retail, if we think of uh, eBay and the kind of the data that they and and that enterprise trend actually has uh, widened our attention and we in the HPC community have to care about the big data now if we want to serve those communities. And that is a big, big change just in uh, five years. All right, so let's uh, jump to the charm school again here. Is, uh, is Hadoop all there is in big data? Or what's, uh, what, what have you guys learned in your research? Yeah, I'm going to be really charming here, Chad, with regards to your point that outside of HPC, everyone equates Hadoop to uh, to big data. My only real problem with that statement is that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Hadoop is, from a market opportunity perspective, essentially the biggest brownie in the pan. But when you poll people on what applications they're using to address their big data challenges, whether you're talking about an HPC user or a non-HPC enterprise user, regardless, only about 15% of respondents say they're using Hadoop. So there's 15%. That brownie's taken 15% of the pan. And then there's but everything the else. There's a lot of other brownies. It's the biggest brownie. But do you, I mean, do you want the whole pan or not? And anyone who's equating Hadoop to big data is leaving 85% of the opportunity on the table for somebody else. Absolutely. Great. Excellent. So great point. So I want to stay on the Hadoop topic for a minute. But since there's so much talk about Hadoop, and there's so much interest, and maybe it's only 15%, but a question for this group, and we'll start with uh, Brady Kimball. What can HPC learn from the Hadoop community? We've, we've been in this community for a long time. Are we too insular, or have we solved all the problems? What can the HPC community learn from the Hadoop community? Um, I, you know, I think going back to my first comment, it's about fault tolerance, right? So right there, when you go to use Hadoop, one of the first claims they make is about fault tolerance and how it's been architected. So really, you know, HPC needs to look and, and, and like, like we've been talking about, having a reality check of some of the different problems that we're facing. And really, everything that I hear from customers is, you know, we'd like to have better utilization rates, but if, if you know, our applications weren't having these different problems, then we could actually address those, those secondary more interesting problem. So to me, it's it's fault tolerance. Excellent. Frank, what do you think? What what can we in the HPC community learn from the Hadoop community? So I, along the same lines, right? So now in the HPC community, we're working on things that are so big that our mean time to interrupt is now measured in days or, or weeks instead of months or, or longer time frames that we're more used to. Um, and these and these folks are dealing with error handling in a much. They, they're expecting things to fail. They're they're learning how to go around that, uh, and that's that's hard to do. It's not an easy thing, uh, um, and especially in a lot of the HPC realms that we all work in, a lot of these things, a lot of the workflows are automated. Experiments are automated. Uh, there's a lot of lessons that I think we can learn from that community, simply in the error handling uh, venue or arena. I think Merle has a comment. Go ahead, Merle. I, I would just reiterate that in the HPC community for years, we brought data from a source to a, a, a residency close to the compute side, and we ran the heck out of that data in one place. And what the Hadoop side and what this distributed data presents to us is a challenge to begin to handle data that doesn't live with us close to the compute node. We, if we don't step up, who will? Excellent. So, Rich, I'm going to ask you the reverse question. We've heard some talk about what we can learn from the Hadoop community. I wonder what your thoughts are and what can the Hadoop community learn from the HPC community? We're perhaps not as large, but we've been at it longer. What can they learn from us? Well, I, I tell you, I want to tell a story because about six months ago, big data affected my life. 
Uh, I was reading through headlines like I do through my job, and I was I read this article, the top 20 big data influencers in the world from Forbes magazine. And I went through it, and I thought my friend Henry Newman might be in there because he's the expert on I.O. And I'm reading this article, and there's my name at number 12. This was derived out of Hadoop, okay? When they look at uh, uh, tw Twitter and all these other uh, social media things, they weigh all this, they ran it through that kind of analytics, and it spit out this list of 20 people. Oddly enough, everyone else had a nice photo, but my character was a cartoon. So that tells you, but okay, so that's so what, what we So what are you saying here, Rich? Did, did you thank them for that, Rich? Yeah, I certainly did. Are you another one of these guys with the face for radio? Is that what you're uh, saying? No, but the, the, <laughs> the, the real answer is, is, is Hadoop, those guys would love to have the I.O. and the disk kind of things that the people in HPC take for granted. Okay, big I.O., big data rates and stuff. They didn't have that budget. They did a very clever thing with MapReduce and Hadoop on a commodity disk, and Google's built a huge business off of that. And now, Hadoop itself, with analytics, they're building a whole ecosystem with companies like Hortonworks, okay? We can learn from them. They're turning this into money, and I think we can learn a big monetization and, and an awareness thing, and that's why I told the story about my little 10 minutes of fame. Thank you. So we've talked a bit about what is big data. We've talked about kind of the Hadoop community, the HPC community. I want to get more now to the how. We've got big data. It's in front of us. So I'm going to ask Merle to start. So uh, Merle, you're part of NCSA. NCSA is building Blue Waters, which is a gigantic system with a massive storage underpinning. What sorts of problems do you have with big data and how are you looking to deal with them at NCSA? We, we may very well have the largest addressable, fastest data system attached to Blue Waters. So uh, the number one, speed. We have to be able to move it in and out. Number two, we used to treat tape storage as archive that we just sort of occasionally went back to use. We now must treat tape storage in a near line way like we have in, in, in the disk storage and uh, be because we have to access more data at a time, we have to understand this entire environment to be able to get to the data very quickly. And that's a new trick. That's what big computing can do if it sits next to big data storage. But we also need big data transport in order to pull that off. Excellent. So that's a great segue. Let's turn to Don. So Don Zyrotex is pretty focused on how to solve some of these big data problems. What do you see are the problems in dealing with big data? And how is Zyrotex looking to solve those problems? Yeah, it's really influencing the community, right, to move forward roadmaps uh, for GPL, right? So we all can benefit from the efforts. I think Mira had done a really good point in terms of ILM, right? You can't have all of your data uh, spinning at the most expensive node when you know you need to put it somewhere else and retrieve it when you need to have it. So ILM type of capabilities. Um, so really, I think the opportunity for HPC in general is start to put more effort investment in the community roadmap so we can start to enable you know, the types of uh, returns on investments and, and data lifecycle management challenges that Merrill has. Okay, excellent. Same question for you, Keith. Obviously, you guys are uh, pretty big into the storage world. What do you see as the problems that big data has brought to the table, and how are you believing that uh, HP can solve those problems as you look to the future? Well, the problems that we're seeing primarily are our customers uh, and, and uh, problem solving, not really treating the large data pools in, in the way that the enterprises uh, address them in the past. Uh, somebody comes to you and said, I have a 24 petabyte file share, how do I back it up? The answer is you don't. Uh, it must be resilient to the points of the gentleman in the back. You know, creating that mindset and then moving that thought process forward to the exascale space. You know, we're going to have to decentralize data in the same way that we decentralize computing and did parallel approaches towards that. Having that resiliency, having that ability, and getting their heads around that is, is really had the problems that we're trying to solve now for our enterprise users and our high performance computing users. Excellent. So resiliency, obviously important yes. uh, when you're talking about big data. Brady Kimball, so adaptive computing, we've been looking at big data problems. What is adaptive doing now or in the future to be able to deal with these big data problems that have been discussed? Well, the interesting challenge that adaptive has is that by the time that it gets to us, you know, it, it, we hope and pray that the hardware vendors have talked to the middleware vendors and that the middleware vendors, you know, are providing the monitoring 
for us to be able to get the information that we can uh, use to optimize and, and handle those types of uh, challenges that our customers are facing. So kind of to supplement what Don said about the community, what it translates to is from the top to bottom stack, need each, each layer in the stack that our customers uh, or people in the industry uh, have need to be able to play their part in, in solving these customers' problems, right? So um, for us, you know, we're, we're looking at things, uh, and I talked to Frank about this before, uh, before the panels of, you know, uh, storage I.O., looking at failure rates, things of that nature. Uh, we, we mentioned moving compute resources closer to storage, so locality. Um, those are the types of things, you know, as uh, I.O. patterns are starting to be explored and, you know, a lot of people think that they know what their I.O. patterns are of their applications, but in reality, you know, if you put monitoring agents on what their I.O. patterns are, they're, they're often surprised. So, um, you know, I guess we all need to, to do that collective part to, to get that information so that we can see those, those common patterns and, and learn to mitigate the, the uh, patterns that are of failure. Excellent. So, Frank, you've got uh, multiple petabytes, maybe even tens of petabytes of data. What has what specific problems has that brought to bear in your environment, and how have you solved those big data problems? Uh, so, I think our, our biggest uh, problem is now that we have everybody's got distributed resources. We're, we're moving data around the country and around a data center, mm -hmm. um, and as you're, you're processing it, you know, in SpaceX and post-processing can be analysis somewhere else. Uh, you're moving data in and out of near line storage, fast scratch. Uh, you have to copy that stuff all over. Um, and you have to be sure that what you generated is what you copied the first time and what you get at the end. Um, and check something at every time is really expensive. Um, and you have, that means you have to trust all the underlying parts. Uh, so, so getting that kind of ingrained in your workflow, ingrained in your computing is a challenge because uh, it costs. You have to weigh the, the risk over the cost. And that's, that's a big deal. So. so Addison, you talked with a lot of end users. What sorts of problems are they running into and how are they solving them? Well, and that's a pretty broad question, but let me make a couple of points that I think will illustrate the answer, right? We went around the table and we kept talking about 100 petabyte and ultra scalable and exascale. And this is right after we started by saying that big is a relative thing, right? We're at supercomputing, but be careful of this over high end bias. There's absolutely a lot that these communities can learn from each other because there are important commonalities. Like, for example, the heavy reliance on in house algorithms, right? There's way more in house written algorithms than there is use of Hadoop or Oracle or things like that. And also, the most common uh, source of data for big data problems, whether you're in HPC or in enterprise, is internally generated data. And this is important because as you try to scale this, and this is something HPC has dealt with in the past and even recently, your algorithmics, your analytics are only as good as your analyst who wrote the algorithm. Right. Yeah. Okay? So you need to know what you're doing. What kind of algorithm are you writing that's going to do this? How do you then get it to scale? These are the important problems that are being dealt with at any level of scale. And while I've got the mic going, I'll also point out, so those are commonalities, but they're also important differences. While I said that so internal sources of data are very important on both sides, something the enterprise side has that the HPC side hasn't had is a huge amount of data that comes from transactions and internet click groups and things like that. It's a different type of data. It's very fast data. They're all very tiny files and you have a billion of them which is not a, 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 a type of data that HPC file systems are, are put to handle right now. So you've got to appreciate that it's a different dimension of problem while still having the commonality of I've got to write a good algorithm that's going to scale, and that's something we're familiar with. Excellent. So I'm going to ask one last question, but before I do that, uh, we are going to have time for a couple questions from the audience. So if any of you have questions for our esteemed panel, be thinking of those. And after I ask this last question, We'll take a couple from the audience if you have any. All right, so the last question, I want you to put on your future glasses for a moment and uh, look into the future. SC17, five years from now, I predict we're back here in Salt Lake City. The question, the question for you is, will big data be a topic at SC17? And we'll start uh, with Brady Kimball. Oh, you can't start with me. I don't have nearly the, the analyst cred that these guys do. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna punch actually. All right, Frank. So 
Yes, but it might not be called big data. It'll be called right, something, yeah. whatever Green. the brand name yes. is that year. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. Addison, Relative. your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, no, he got it. Yes, and yes. It right on. Big data. It'll be called something else. Okay, Frank? Or, I'm sorry, Keith? No, I, I have to concur. I mean, it's, you know, it's all relative. It has to do with the size of the problem, and uh, it's going to be data. <laughs> okay, anyone disagree that we'll still have it, but we'll call it something else? Merle? Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> no, that was a softball. That was, yeah, easy. That was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we thank the panelists for their time, but oh, let's wait, see if we have wait, wait, questions no. about right. 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 If you're closing it out, here's what I will say about All future right. looking for. We, you don't blow it off as like a buzzword thing. Right. There are plenty of buzzwords that come through this conference all the time. And out of all of them that I've seen the whole time I've come to the conference, none of them has had as real and present an opportunity as big data in terms of being an opportunity to expand the market for high performance computing technologies immediately, right now. There is real money being spent by end users who don't think of themselves as HPC on HPC technologies with a performance mindset today, and it's a huge opportunity. So, you know, don't blow it off as a buzzword just because I say the name's going to change in five years. Right. And, and, and it's a lasting problem. I would just, I would just right? add one piece to that, that big data is sort of a, a, a non-action uh, word set, and data solutions will be what we're talking about in five years. And I think we'll be closer to talking about the returns, what we do with that data, the returns on investment that happen in the enterprise, and, if, and HPC is central, central to those solutions. You're a brilliant man and a class act, Merle Johnson. Yeah, let's uh, let's see if we have any questions from the audience. Any questions for our esteemed panel? All right, well, we must have uh, wowed them into submission. So thanks again to our great panel. Let's give them a great hand. Thank you, Thank you very much. And thank you, audience, for your time.